Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be turning the world's first Ryzen powered Windows 11 tablet into a full-fledged gaming PC by adding a pretty powerful GPU. So what we've got here is Minisform's brand new V3 AMD powered tablet. It's actually the world's first. I've done a couple videos on it. I personally really do like this thing. We've got a beautiful 14 inch display. It's powered by a Ryzen 7 8000 series APU. And by itself, it can actually game really well because we've got built-in RDNA 3 graphics. This will run Cyberpunk, it runs Helldivers 2, it's actually a really great performer. We can take the TDP on this up to 28 watts, but we can always use a little bit more. And luckily, with this tablet, we do have two USB 4 ports over on the side. They both support 40 gig protocol, so adding an external GPU, whether it's a Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, or USB 4 eGPU is really simple with this. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video to get much better GPU performance out of this tablet. It's actually pretty cool what this thing can do. And of course, if you're not familiar with the V3 tablet, for the APU, we've got the AMD Ryzen 7 8840U, a 14-inch 1600p IPS display up to 165 hertz, 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5 running at 6400 megahertz, and one terabyte M.2 SSD. In order to add more graphics performance to this tablet, obviously you will need an eGPU. There's a few small form factor eGPUs on the market, like GPD's G1, but in this video we're actually going to be using the 1X GPU. I do like this thing, and it's basically the same specs as that GPD G1, but we've got a couple extra features built in here. And all we basically needed to do was plug in our USB 4 cable to one of those free USB 4 ports. We've now got the AMD Connect software up and running. And instead of using the built-in Radeon 780M, we've now got a Radeon RX 7600 MXT with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. And this eGPU also charges at up to 100 watts, plus it'll do up to 120 watts on the GPU side of things, so it's actually a pretty powerful little unit. Plus, when connecting this, we get some extra I.O. So up front here, we've got two full-size USB 3 ports. Over on the side, Ethernet, two full-size display ports, two full-size HDMI ports. This does support Oculink, but unfortunately the V3 tablet doesn't support Oculink. But we've also got that USB 4 connector and our power in. And what sets this eGPU apart from others on the market right now is the fact that on the bottom here, we can install an extra M.2 SSD, so we can up the storage on whatever we have this connected to. And again, the 1X eGPU houses an AMD Radeon RX 7600 MXT with 8 gigs of VRAM. If you're not too familiar with these eGPUs, especially Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, or USB 4, you know that connecting to a device like this and then trying to run on the built-in screen will really lower the performance of that eGPU. Basically, we're wasting about half of the bandwidth that this thing can put out over USB 4, which in the first place is only 40 gigs, so we're still working with pretty low bandwidth when you compare it to a PCIe X16 slot and a real desktop PC, and that's because it needs to send the signal out and then right back into that monitor. So yeah, we're not seeing the kind of performance that this RX 7600 MXT can put out, you definitely want to connect this to an external monitor, and that's one of the big reasons these eGPUs have video outputs like DisplayPort and HDMI. Now, the Minisforum V3 actually has a really cool feature built in, known as V-Link. So over on the left-hand side, there's an extra USB Type-C port. This will allow us to plug other devices in and basically use the 14-inch screen on the tablet as an external monitor. But there's a problem when it comes to trying to go from HDMI to USB Type-C. I personally haven't found an adapter that'll work kind of in reverse. It's really easy to get USB Type-C over to HDMI, but trying to flip that around, I personally haven't found a solution. So if you do know of one, let me know in the comments below. I think this would be really cool. That way we could feed right back into the monitor and not waste any of that bandwidth with the eGPU. So the best option to get the most performance out of your eGPU with the Minisform V3, at least at the time of making this video, is to use an external display. I've got a 27-inch display here. It's a 1440p display. We've got the 1X GPU power going into it, HDMI out of there, and we're going to run that USB 4 cable right over to the V3 tablet. And again, while this is plugged in, 
we're going to get that USB 4 connection to the eGPU, plus we'll be able to charge the tablet up. We don't have to worry about battery life, so we can run this at the maximum TDP of 28 watts. Now you might notice that the bottom screen here just changed aspect ratios, and that's because I needed to set my external display as my main display, and it's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio display, and the built-in screen on the tablet has an aspect ratio of 16 by 10. Right now, we're at 1440p. I don't mind the bars on the top and bottom, and to tell you the truth, whenever I use an eGPU on a device like this with a built-in screen, I usually just disable the screen itself, but I wanted to keep both screens up to show you this thing working. So far, so good. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 7 8840U, 8 cores, 16 threads, and we're going to be running this at 28 watts. The V3 does have built-in software from Minus Forum with three different power profiles. So we can go to 15 watts, we can go to 18 on battery or 22 plugged in, and then our maximum performance will be that 28 watt mode. So full out right now with this, we should see some pretty good performance. And I'll tell you, I've run benchmarks on this. I've tested games with the iGPU. And the first thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks, just comparing that 780M iGPU to this external RX 7600 MXT. First one we have here is 3D Mark Night Raid. And remember, we will be running all of these at that 28 watt TDP on the CPU. And on the built in 780M iGPU with this benchmark, 25,973, but with that RX 7600 MXT, 46,777. So a nice jump in GPU performance. So we definitely expected this. Fire Strike, seeing similar things here. 7,059 on the stock 780M. 20,506 on the eGPU. And finally, we've got Time Spy. On the built in iGPU, we scored a 3,108, and with the RX 7600 MXT connected, 9,509. Now, I completely understand that these are synthetic benchmarks, and it really doesn't tell the whole story. But yeah, we definitely upped the gaming performance here, so let's go ahead and check out some games running on this device. Here's Helldivers, 1080p, ultra settings. I'm locked at 60 and I could not avoid this. For some odd reason, even taking the frame limiter in the game up just wouldn't go over 60. Not sure if it was some setting in the AMD Radeon software or not, but this is the first time I'm testing this game with an external GPU. And some games do have some weird quirks when you're using an eGPU. Next up, Forza Horizon 5, definitely an easier one to run, but I wanted to see if we could take this up to 1440 Ultra, no FSR, and it's totally possible. We actually saw an average of 89 FPS Ultra 1440p on this thing. Red Dead Redemption 2, just using the built-in benchmark, we're at 1080p, Ultra settings, and this did way better than I thought it would. Sometimes when testing this game on an external GPU, especially Thunderbolt 4 or even USB 4, we see some really bad performance. But with this, we had an average of 90 FPS and our minimum FPS was right in the 30s. Sometimes you'll see this dip way down, especially using a connection like this with an eGPU. Since the release of Spider-Man Remastered and Spider-Man Miles Morales for PC, I've had real issues using eGPUs with these games. Now it's definitely got better, but it's not perfect. So in some cases we can hit 90s and then in other cases you'll see it dip down to around 62. But I'll tell you one game that works really well with this setup here is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and going in I didn't exactly know what was going to happen. Of course the game is well optimized, there's a lot of settings that we can change. We're at 1440p, high settings across the board. No resolution scale, so we are at a true 1440p with this. Average of 85 and a low of 66. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. So we're at 1080p ultra settings and we can run this at 1440 medium settings with some FSR, but I wanted to see if it would handle it with no scaling and it's doing decent. We had an average of 73 FPS. I was hoping for a little more out of it, but you know, with any of this, you can go ahead and turn V-Sync on, lock it down at 60, and you will get a really smooth experience out of all of the games that we saw running today. So yeah, with the Minus Forum V3 tablet on the go with the built-in iGPU, built-in battery, seeing some decent performance out of a lot of the AAA games. We've got those RDNA 3 graphics. And then when you get back to the house, you want to really up that resolution you can go ahead and plug in an eGPU. 
Now, like I mentioned, I would love to take advantage of the V-Link port here, but I haven't found a reverse HDMI to USB Type-C adapter. Now, regular adapters just won't work in reverse, at least all of the ones that I have, and I've tested about four of them. Nothing will allow me to kind of connect it in reverse. It's always USB Type-C to HDMI. I need it to be the other way around. So if you do know of a solution, let me know in the comments below. I think that would be really cool just to have an all-in-one setup here without losing any of the bandwidth like we would if we were to feed it back through USB 4. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you want to learn a little more about the Minisforum V3 tablet, I'll leave some links down below. I've created two videos so far. I'll also leave links to their official website. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this thing, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.